South Texas, always a hot spot for illegal border crossings, but something here is different. What has changed? The, the, the number of people. Tens of thousands of children have crossed the border here alone. This is not about religion or politics. This is just about doing what's right for people. The path is now well-worn between Mexico and the United States. They'll stay one behind another, and that's why you see the path is very small. You'll never secure it 100%. Many more children will come, their future unknown. I'm Leila Santiago in the Rio Grande Valley in Texas. This is ground zero for the nation's newest immigration crisis. More than 52,000 children, some toddlers, have crossed this border without a parent. It can be dangerous and sometimes even deadly to cross the Rio Grande. That is the natural border between Texas and Mexico. And there is absolutely no guarantee of a new life on the other side. Tonight, we trace the path of these children, why they are taking the risk, the care they're receiving here. We'll even show you the impact miles away in North Carolina. But first, the journey alone. The Rio Grande Valley, a place where two cultures merge and many are just trying to achieve the American dream. It is an ever-changing community with people constantly coming and going often unseen. Defined by its next door neighbor, the issue of immigration has been part of everyday life here for years. Now, something has changed. At one time I saw almost 200 kids, uh, women and kids. Coming down this yes, road. Yes, in this road, yep. Yeah. This road funnels in from the border onto the land where he grew up. The family of Lorenzo and Zaldua Jr. is one of the few to still own property on the border of the Rio Grande Valley. He comes here to reminisce, and while doing so, he has seen the growing number of children crossing the border illegally and alone. There's been three kids since, since this started, this fiasco, this invasion. I wanted to just take home and tell my wife, hey, we're adopting him, okay? But we can't do that. We can't. You can't. Children like Alejandro from Honduras. He crossed the border alone and tells Border Patrol he is not scared. His parents, he says, are in San Antonio. But in a way, Alejandro is far from alone. More than 52,000 children have crossed the southwest border without a parent this year. So far, the number is double the number of unaccompanied children from all of last year. An overwhelming majority are coming in through the Rio Grande Valley. Now ask yourself this question. Of the whole valley, why come through this road? You tell me. Because someone is directing traffic from the gate, hey, come through here, it's easy access. To get these children into the U.S., it will cost a family thousands of dollars, money paid to smugglers and cartels. It seems to me like it's a good business, and business is booming. Typically, we see a lot of activity at night. Uh, with this current issue we have going on, uh, we have a lot of influx coming during the day. During the day, many women and unaccompanied children cross the river. The influx can also be seen at Border Patrol detention facilities across the valley. Our camera was one of the few recently allowed into the McAllen Border Patrol station. It's one of the busiest in the area. Women, children and men caught crossing the border in McAllen are brought here. At its peak this year, Border Patrol apprehended about 1,300 people in one day. The max capacity here, 380. Just a few blocks down, officials have responded with a brand new facility, one solely for unaccompanied children. The $3.6 million project will provide shelter and health screenings. And then this will be the stage that we try to get them from here uh, immediately into HHS custody so they can put them in the sh additional shelters. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services will try to connect the children to family members already in the U.S. Until then, they will be in government-run shelters, now at the center of controversy. Locate them in D.C. where you can keep a very close eye on their welfare rather than putting them in our backyard. Welcomed or not, the children making it into these shelters might actually consider themselves lucky. 
they no longer face the dangers of being smuggled into the U.S. Thousands of people are apprehended in McAllen each week. Many go undetected and continue the journey 75 miles north to Brooks County. We traveled to Falfurius in Brooks County to experience the conditions. Nine out of ten calls deal with the undocumented aliens here. Elias Pompa is one of four deputies in the county. Not long into his shift, someone is spotted on the side of the road flagging down a deputy car for help. We found a 22-year-old man from Guatemala named Luzbin. He was on his way to Houston to find work. I'm asking him how long he's been out there. He's been out there for a month. He tells me he came alone, but felt too dehydrated and nauseous to continue. The hot, sandy, harsh conditions of Brooks County have claimed hundreds of lives. This year alone, deputies have found more than 40 bodies of people believed to have crossed the border illegally. The youngest, 16. Found him right there. The cross is over there. Lavoie Durham from El Tuli Ranch found the body of a man from El Salvador where the stick cross stands. Well, you have a sense of sorrow. And uh, you must remember that uh, some loved one, you know, wherever he was from, lost a loved one, and they don't even know it, and they might not ever know it. And uh, whether it's legal or illegal, I think it's, uh, they deserve some dignity. On a ranch already filled with signs of illegal immigration, Durham has added one more. These are all fresh water jugs, full of water. I usually put about 10 or 15 in here. The portable station, labeled water in Spanish, is filled about once a week. How many lives do you think this has saved? It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. In 24 years working here, he has found about 20 bodies on this ranch, five this year, all believed to be illegal immigrants. Do you consider the fact that you give them water and you might help them out, is that assisting them? Oh, I get uh, criticized for for saying that I aid and abet them, and I tell them that I've got this water station because of the five dead people that I found, and I've got a heart. I've got pity and I've got compassion. I don't want people to die on this ranch that I run. No. Living near the border has a way of giving people like Durham and Zaldua a personal understanding of what's happening on the border right now. They've seen how things have changed over the years, the conditions, the law enforcement, the people, and now, the children. For many of these children, home isn't directly across the border. In fact, for most of these children, home is beyond Mexico. It is Central America. Coming up on The Journey Alone, the law that dictates what will happen to these children and why it doesn't treat everyone crossing this border the same way. According to a 2008 law designed to prevent human trafficking, children from Mexico or Canada crossing this border alone or illegally are sent home quickly. All other children are guaranteed a day in a U.S. courtroom. But until that day comes, U.S. law requires officials here to provide shelter and care for the thousands of children pouring into the United States, stirring controversy and straining resources. Typically before it was the cat and mouse, we were the, the cats chasing the mice, now it's the other way, the mice are chasing the cats to turn themselves in. Instead of chasing drug smugglers, Border Patrol agents now find themselves surrounded by undocumented women and children throughout the day. 75% of the children traveling alone come from Central America, primarily Honduras, Guatemala and El Salvador. I mean, they're not running away from you. Why is that? What we're receiving as far as intelligence is in, in the false information they've received from the cartels is that they're typically, if they, if they do that, they're going to get paperwork to stay, the permiso, if you will. Uh, that's not true. What is true 
In 2008, President Bush signed an anti-human trafficking law. It states most children from Mexico or Canada can be immediately deported. An unaccompanied child from any other country stays in the U.S. until an immigration judge decides his or her fate. In 2012, President Obama announced the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program. It gives certain undocumented children temporary permission to stay in the U.S. Neither grants immediate citizenship to children crossing the border illegally. To get a better idea of why so many women and children are crossing illegally, we headed to the border. After hours of tracking activity, we see movement off in the distance. Smugglers brought this woman across on a raft. Lost with her two-year-old girl, she tells me she fears deportation, repeating she cannot return to El Salvador. The week before she left, the gangs, she said, killed a three-month-old girl in her neighborhood. That's why she decided to get her daughter out of there. They will kill anyone, she tells us. Days later, in that same area, we find Marta Alvarado with her two-year-old daughter named Brittany. She is from Honduras and tells me she didn't know if she would ever find her way through this land alone. She explains that in Mexico, cartels tried to kidnap her and threatened to take her into the woods to kill her. She fought back, and because she came with God on her side, she said, she got away. Both women turned themselves in to the Border Patrol. Stories like these are heard every day at the Catholic Charities facility in McAllen. This is where families just released from Border Patrol custody find help. What these people have gone through is so traumatic and it's just, they just need, a, you know, some kindness. The center has seen people from all over the world and of all ages. We had one mother that had uh, a baby here. They took her to the hospital, she had the baby. So you have a mother that is crossing this border at nine months pregnant? Yeah, and the interesting thing, the, the minute that baby was born was an American citizen. <laughs> <laughs> Volunteer Hermie Fursagi registers anyone who walks through the door. She lists where they're coming from and where they're going. North Carolina, New York, Virginia, Indiana, San Francisco. North Carolina, go. huh? North Carolina, yep. Where in North Carolina? Charlotte. So, so yeah. Why are they going to Charlotte? We have family there. She was coming with her son and her granddaughter. Her son is eight years old, this lady's and her granddaughter was three years old. They took her granddaughter away at immigration. It's not her daughter. They took her away. So her daughter is, or her granddaughter is considered an unaccompanied minor? Right, three years old. <laughs> I have a granddaughter that's three years old. So. And what does that do to you? Oh no, it breaks my heart. I can't imagine my granddaughter being separated from her mom. You know, I can't. At the Catholic Charities facility, we find Reina de la Paz, a mother who came with two sons, hoping to get to San Francisco. I ask her why a mother would put her child through such a journey. The gangs in El Salvador wanted to kill her sons. And that, she tells me, is enough for any mother to flee with her children. It's not just nonprofit organizations responding. The Rio Grande Valley is seeing the largest law enforcement presence on the border it has ever seen. Yet smugglers are still bringing in dozens of women and children at a time. Next on the journey alone, our cameras capture how they're doing it. You have to understand, we, this, is, this is our border. This is what we do. We, we're working to keep the, the nation safe. Law enforcement officers, local, state, and federal, have amplified border security operations. Even the U.S. Secretary of Homeland Security is pleading with parents in Central America not to put their vulnerable children in the hands of violent smugglers. But what we're seeing with our very own eyes, these children are still coming. Usted, señora? Many of these children will come from a place that does not share a border with the United States. A part of the world many claim is falling prey to gangs demanding loyalty and money with cruel, sometimes deadly consequences for unmet demands. It's a part of the world where parents are willing to pay thousands of dollars for their children to escape. 
Children will find a way, either by taking the bus or walking, to get to the border of Guatemala and Mexico. There, they will cross illegally into Mexico. Once in Mexico, many take a freight train. Most call it la bestia, the beast. Some call it the death train. Many have died while riding on its rooftop. As they continue to make their way north, immigrants pay cartels along the way, following the path of least resistance until they meet the Rio Grande. The river winds uh, constantly. It's very hard to have a line of sight here. In Anzaldúas Park in Mission, Texas, the same river is a popular place on the weekends. It's a typical Saturday morning here on the river and on the other side, on the Mexico side, you can see children, families, people just having fun. But what we've learned is that this is a very well-organized operation. So that means things really aren't what they appear to be. Some of these jet skiers, they will become smugglers. Some of the fishermen, they are the scouts and they are all in place just waiting for the right time to bring women and children over to this side of the river. Throughout the morning, jet skis coming from Mexico could be seen up and down the river with different people on them. By afternoon, we quickly spot this woman holding on tightly. Minutes later, she comes through the trees on U.S. land. Acabas de cruzar? No. She denies crossing and insists she is from Texas. Border Patrol learns a different story. I just approached her and I asked her if she had crossed and she said, no, I haven't crossed. I'm just looking for my husband. And now she's telling Border Patrol that she's from here and she's just looking for her husband and Border Patrol's asking her, you know, why is your face wet? Did you cross over? Do you have proper documentation? And she just keeps saying, I'm from here, I'm from here. It's one of the many ways people cross illegally. Uh, there's a trail as well worn. Yeah. Uh, they'll use that to cross. Once they've crossed, you see the trail here, yeah, and then they'll continue up north. Women and children are most often smuggled in big groups on wooded trails off the river, and sometimes smugglers use the groups as distractions. So you have a group of 30, 50 mothers and children, or children alone, and at the same time, they'll use another point to bring over drugs or or someone who may be a, sm a smuggler or something of that nature? Yes, I mean, the, the criminal organization is in it for money. Um, they're, not, they're not looking at the value of a human life here. Uh, they just want to get the product across, uh, be it bodies or drugs. La Jolla police patrol one of the main corridors used to transport drugs in the Rio Grande Valley. Operation Border Star is an effort to crack down on the drug smuggling and human trafficking. And one little girl, she was, she was by, by herself. Like, she was coming over here by herself. So Polly, her mom, was in North Carolina. Children not caught by law enforcement officials typically end up in a place like this. So he's, he's going in right now to clear the house. Um, they call this a stash house. And when a lot of the people who cross the border come here, someone will be waiting for them and will bring them to a house like this to stay until they take them to their final destination. These abandoned homes provide the shelter many long for, but they're only temporary, and they often come at a price. We're told this is where children can be most vulnerable, often exposed to abuse, violence, and extortion at the hands of the smugglers promising a better life. The solutions are not as simple as they seem, especially when there are undocumented families across the country. Many of these children will end up more than a thousand miles away. Their destination could be North Carolina. Next, we introduce you to a young boy and a young girl living in the Triangle without proper documentation. Their future in El Salvador, they say, would be death. Their future in the U.S. for now is yet to be determined. To learn more about unaccompanied children crossing the border, go to WRAL.com and search Journey Alone. We'll have frequently asked questions, behind the scenes blogs, and an online chat right after the program. What happens here on the border is only part of the story. The journey alone continues in courtrooms across America. Part of our travels to tell this story took us to Charlotte, North Carolina. 
It's Michael Murillo's first time going into a U.S. courtroom to see an immigration judge in Charlotte. Los papeles hacen pedir asilo político. He wants to be granted political asylum. Late last year, at 17, Murillo crossed the border into the United States alone and illegally. He too tells us he left Honduras to escape gang violence. His life since then. Mostly studying, learning English, because that he believes will open doors, he tells us. He can then succeed and forget his past. He now lives in the Raleigh area and attends a local high school. He'll have to continue coming back here to immigration court over several months. But he's hoping to one day hear the judge say this. You can stay here. Don't worry. You are now documented. Just keep studying. Government officials estimate nearly 2,000 children, just like Murillo, have been released to sponsors here in North Carolina from January to July. Usually, these sponsors are family members already in the U.S. who will take care of them until an immigration judge decides if they'll be deported. These two kids, also living in the Triangle, know what it's like and agreed to talk to us if we concealed their identity. Both are still very afraid of the gang violence they escaped in El Salvador. These days, however, it is the fear of deportation that overwhelms them. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. The 14-year-old girl tells us she said no to gang members trying to recruit her. If I go back, they'll kill me. At school, when one of her friends refused to join the gang. Well, they took her out of school and they decapitated her. Her father in North Carolina paid to have her smuggled into the U.S. When gang members found out she escaped, she says, they killed her uncle in El Salvador. The 12-year-old boy by her side was told he had two options in El Salvador. Join them, sell drugs, and kill or be killed. He chose another option, to flee. Rockingham County Sheriff Sam Page made the trip to the border to see what was happening for himself. So why does someone like you care? I mean, you're in North Carolina. We are miles and miles away. Well, I, again, uh, we, we had discussion is we're, we're having issues with criminal activity and dealing with the Mexican drug cartels in my community in North Carolina. I know where they come through and where our major drug uh, runs come through and end up into North Carolina. We're two, we're two days driving driving time from the border. So a lot of times what happens at the border doesn't stay there. There have been a lot of press conferences about this. Uh, we need action uh, and let's talk. The White House is asking for $3.7 billion to provide better care, more law enforcement, and more immigration judges. Republicans say it can be done for less. As for North Carolina senators, Senator Kay Hagan wants more funding for the military's U.S. Southern Command to crack down on smugglers. Senator Richard Burr supports changes in existing law that would expedite the deportation of unaccompanied minors. Agreement on a solution may be just as difficult to find on the border as it is in our nation's capital. Why are they being sent to Virginia? Why are they being sent to Massachusetts? Why are they being sent to California? They're going the wrong way. They got to go south. It's our chance to show the world that you know we can't take care of people. You know. So what's the solution to all this? Secure the border. How do you do that? National Guard, more technology, fences. Put it all up there. You can do it. We can secure it if we want to. The influx of unaccompanied children has been called a humanitarian crisis. While there is agreement something must be done about the border crisis, there is very little agreement on the potential solutions. Tonight, we hope we have given you a better understanding of the issue, why it's happening, and what it means for North Carolina. From the Rio Grande Valley, I'm Leila Santiago, and I thank you for joining us for The Journey Alone.